I'm presenting the like the halfway stage of the BDD uh, work. And the idea is that I've, I've built a scaffolding for how you can actually use BDD to create these more complete tests. And I'm hoping that in the second half, other people will actually come in, on board and create some features and scenario tests themselves. So the so plan today is to talk people through how to actually use BDD to create a, a test. What I'll do is I'll share my screen. You, so I've got a couple of slides just to explain the process, and I'm going to actually give a demo. So this shows what a Gaetano's team are, are currently publishing when they create these golden components. And effectively, they're describing a component, they're categorizing it based on ETOM and SID, and they're showing what the external APIs are that that component would expose and consume. And the challenge is, when we then look at that and go on to make our automated tests, the CTKs, at the moment, we're only looking at the APIs. It's good that they're categorizing based on ETOM and SID, but you can't take that information and use that to drive tests. So it's useful because you can use it to categorize components, but we need something more in, in order to be able to do something beyond testing the individual APIs of a component. So something which is actually exercising you know, into API calls, uh, testing more the functionality of a component, we need something more than, than this. And that is the proposal to use to use BDD. And this is from Vodafone. So we are using BDD in Vodafone, and this is our internal uh, description. Of it. it is so BDD stands for Behavior Driven Development. It's part of our agile software development practice. And the, the purpose of the BDD is, is actually you, you use it to describe the requirement. So instead of describing a, an abstract requirement, you use scenarios, so effectively you're describing your requirement by example, using scenarios. And for this, the, the so the BDDs are actually created like by our, you know, our product owner, like by our, by our stakeholders. Often there's a collaboration to actually nail down the BDD, but the idea is for our software development teams, this is the, the requirement into the team. And then the good thing is because the BDD is more structured than just a textual requirement, you can actually then use it to drive automated tests or TDD. Yeah. So, so it's used in, in, we are using it actually internally in Vodafone and all the, all the teams using it say it, they think it's the right thing to do in an agile software environment. And this is what a BDD looks like. So it, it's very simple. You, you describe a feature and you can have multiple, like for a component, we might have multiple features. And for each feature, you can describe uh, you know, one or more scenarios. And in for each scenario, you have these keywords. It says given, which is effectively setting up the test data for whatever the, the, that scenario is. So given the following registered customers, when, and this is then saying the action you're performing for that, for that scenario. So when customer spends an amount, then, and then is then testing the outcome, the testing result. And so all the scenarios, you basically have a given or one or more given, one or more when, one or more then. And so by describing it like this, and this, this is actually a structured language, which is called Gherkin. And Gherkin basically, it, it's almost like, looks like pseudocode. But there is when you write the pseudocode, if someone backs it up with the TDD matching this, you can actually run the pseudocode. You can actually uh, apply a test to this. And that's what I've been doing. And then finally, before I go on to the demo, this is where we said, we were going to put the BDD. So Gaetano is his team as part of the stage two specification of the component. The idea is that they create these BDD specifications. Again, we might consult and collaborate on exactly nailing them, them down, but the idea is that they, the BDD is part of the stage two. And then this team, for each time there's a new BDD, would create the corresponding TDD. Yeah, so that's what we said we would do. And I'll show you then a real example. So or in fact, my, my real example is from, it's, I've taken the example, which is use case two from IT 1228. And it describes browsing BTC to catalog and then checking eligibility. So I've just distilled just the catalog part of it. And so when you do that, I've created one feature in two scenarios. So and I want people to contribute more scenarios into this. But what I've done so far is basically saying the feature is IT 1228 browse BTC catalog. And there's two different scenarios. One of them is looking at the categories and one of them is looking at the product offers. 
And, and if I look at the, the categories, which is a very, very simple one, it says, given an empty product catalog, then given a catalog populated with category data, and it gives it, this is the starting data. So when I run this, it should populate, it should first get access to a catalog, it should populate it with this data. Then when I request a list of category resources, because that's the action I'm performing, effectively I should see that same list of resources. So it's a very, very simple test, but it's a good example demonstrating BDD and TDD. Esther, why did you have to specify given an empty product catalog to begin with? Well, uh, so what's behind this, there is a product catalog component running, and if I run the test once, it'll be full of products. And I don't want them to run it again and the tests fail because it's got unexpected data in it. So I've created some given saying, you know, I want a product catalog and I want it to be empty. So I'm just being explicit about it being empty. And the TDD behind this actually gets a product catalog and makes sure that it's empty. And I, I, can, show, I can show that. Because otherwise, if you run the test multiple times, I, you don't want it to fail subsequent times because the test state is wrong. So, but you can, effectively, when you write the, the, the test, you can put any, like this is just written in English and you could write anything you want here and I'll show you how you can write new tests. But I chose to say, given an empty product catalog and I, and I, and I wrote it separately because you might use this in multiple places, you know, might, might multiple times want to refresh my catalog. Yeah. So, and what's behind this, if I show my postman, I have got a product catalog component running in the Open Digital Lab. And if I do a query on the categories, for example, it's, I get, it's empty. So the product catalog is running and it's returning me an empty set of categories. And if I look at the product offering, it's also empty. And so there is a product catalog behind it. And, and to run this in, run this in Gherkin. Uh, so I, if I run this and you, so this is the language it's called Gherkin. The thing I'm using to run it is it's a JavaScript version of Cucumber, which is a TDD. So you have to actually write code behind it. I'm going to show the code. I'll show it running first, then I'll show the code behind it. And so it's running in the JavaScript framework. And all I do is I say npm start, and it's running this thing called Cucumber. And the Cucumber is available in different languages. This is Cucumber JavaScript. And you see it's run it and saying I'm running two scenarios. And there are seven steps and they've all passed and it's created a report for me, which I can go and have a look at. If I go into the reports, this is what it creates. And here's my report. And it's basically saying each one of these steps has passed. So given an empty product catalog passed, this passed. And so you get a report like this. And just to show that it is actually working, if I go and make a mistake in this, so this scenario is, is inputting that data and it's testing against this, if it exists by, if I make this invalid data, that test should fail, just to show that it actually is, is real. If I run it again, I should get one failed step in my test. And she, she, she's failed and I get this report back saying, you know, that bit of it's failed when, it, when we see category data and have a look at the report. It's the same thing. I see lots of it was passed, but yeah, when I did it then and I tested the category data, it's saying it didn't match the result it was expecting. Yeah, so, so you can write these tests in what looks like pseudo code. It's something that the business stakeholders should be able to read and understand. And yet you can actually run the tests because there's some code behind the implementation of these keywords. And finally, I'll just show that it is actually interacting with the product catalog. So if I go back to my postman, if I do a get on the product offerings, you can see it has created these product offerings in the catalog and I've got product offerings linked to the categories. And, and so it is actually, you know, that so that pseudo code has actually created the correct offers and the categories in my product catalog component. And how it does it is there's, there's an implementation behind every time you see a keyword given an empty product catalog in my JavaScript in the TDD, there's something which implements that. And I'll show that here. So here's the JavaScript, here's the TDD. 
and the keyword given, and then I pass it that same bit of English text. And so given an empty product catalog, this is the bit which implements that. And so my given an empty product catalog will run this function. And what this function does, it says, ah, I need to get access to the product catalog API. So it goes effectively to the cluster and and because they're self-describing, it browses and finds what is the product catalog API. And it, and it asserts that it's find, found it. So it'll give an error if it can't find it. Then it goes and deletes all the resources. And I'm deleting because I've run the test again. At the moment, the catalog's full of stuff I've done in this test. So if I run the test again, I need to empty it first. So, so this given an empty product catalog then says, I'm going to delete the product offering price, the product offerings, specifications, the categories, and the catalogs. So those are the resources in the, my product catalog. So this is the implementation behind that bit of pseudocode. And you can write whatever pseudocode you want. And if I show, like I put in another step, you know, um, given a security. Yeah, I need a security token. I could write that and each I can put it whatever I want in my pseudocode. If there's no implementation behind it, it helps actually helps you create the implementation. So at the moment, I've just written some random English here. And if I go back to my test, it should say that's undefined because I haven't yet defined the, the, the TDD for it. So it doesn't, doesn't fail. It, it basically says, it says the first bit passed, and then given a security token, it says it's undefined. And it gives you a little bit of a boiler, a boiler template code. So it's implemented with the following snippet. So it's telling me I need to implement that bit of code in my TDD. And then, so I put that bit of code in my TDD, and now the code is, is empty. So, you know, this is where you actually have to write the code to do whatever you want it to do. And initially, you, as a standard, you return pending. So, so I run it again, it'll go from being undefined to being pending. But then you go and implement it and then you assert the correct behavior. And that's where you have tests of pass or fail. So now it's saying it's given a security token is pending. So it doesn't fail, it says, oh, you haven't, you haven't implemented yet, or the implementation is returning a pending answer. So this is how you actually write it. So it's, so it's quite straightforward. You can write whatever code you want uh, to implement your, your scenario. And then for each bit of the implementation, it, you have then a bit of corresponding JavaScript code. Um, this was a very simple example because I wasn't passing any parameters. It was just that, that, that bit of text. If I decide I want to parameterize something, so this one then says, given a product catalog populated with, in quotes, category. So I'm saying I'm passing in that this, this resource is a category resource. And then this is what they call a data table. So, so I can pass in a table of data. And so my function that implements this actually gets passed that's like the resource name as a string and this data table. And then my TDD can use that to say, ah, I have to manipulate that data and put it, call the right APIs to put it in the product catalog. So if I look at this one, it's, it's a little bit more involved. So get rid of that. So the next one is given a product catalog populated with string data, and I'm that then gets mapped into this function where it's called, I call it an input resource and a data table. So this function gets passed like a, a name of resource and a table. And I, I use that to actually load and I've created a helper function to make it easy. I've actually created like a set of utility functions to make it easy to load data into this product catalog. So I, I load that data, which is actually just one call of this function, right? Give the resource, the data table, the API, and, and you get back a success or not. But this could be used for like any resource where I'm just putting like a, a fixed set of data into that resource. Yeah. So that's the implementation of that. But that implementation, you get given a resource and get given the data table. So you see how it was. So the first scenario is very simple, very straightforward, because I'm putting stuff in, I'm getting it out. 
the second scenario is more involved because in this case, like a product offer is, is actually linked to the category resources. So in this one, I'm saying, given a catalog populated with product offering data linked to category resources, and both of these are parameterized, and I give it a whole data table. So this one is actually, there's more going on in the implementation because it has to basically create the product offer, find the category which has this name and it links them together. So this, you know, in the actual implementation, this is this notion of a product offer or fiber offering two is linked to a category, which is another resource and it has to know the ID and everything like that. So the implementation of the second, the second is slightly more involved, but it's not, you know, it's, it's not, mega complicated if I go into the implementation for this it says given a catalog populated with string data linked to a string resources and I'm calling it an input resource and a link resource then there's a little bit of code which actually puts that into the product catalog database so you know it's not tremendously complicated and then the test is slightly more interesting as well because then I'm saying when I select a product offering filtered by category name equal to internet line of product, and I'm not just saying, give me the same data back, I'm saying I want to filter it. And in this case, I pass in four lines and I'm getting back three. And I could, I could extend this at the moment, I'm testing for the internet line of product. Or I could, you know, I could quickly write one where I'm testing for IoT. And the IoT should return me one line, which is this line. So I just need. Yeah, so, I, so I can edit it. And because I'm reusing the same parameterization, like the functions already exist to implement this. And uh, so I've just extended the scenario. So I'm testing for. The internet line of product, I'm getting three back. I'm testing the IoT line of product, which is getting one thing back. And if I run that, it should, should get, it should also pass. Okay, so now I'm getting a report with even more you know, more complicated scenarios. And that, that, that's basically it. So, and what I was hoping could happen is I've written one feature with two scenarios with an implementation. And I'm hoping I've got enough of like a boilerplate that some other teams can come and say, ah, I'll add a new feature looking at this IG1288, one of the other use cases looking at uh, the product catalog, and then create something like this, which is becomes the requirement for the product catalog, but also can automate uh, the tests. Are there any questions? I guess one question is that when you write your the code, the, the TDD code for your given, can you span across multiple components in there if you've got a, you know, ultimately, you know, we want to sort of test end-to-end -end scenarios. Here, here you've got a fairly simple set of use cases in one component, but... You can do, like at the moment, what I actually wanted to have it, because I want these BDD to be part of the golden component specification. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want them to span multiple components. Mm -hmm. and, and if a component is dependent on something else, I want to do that by having a stubbed implementation of that something else. Like mm -hmm. at the moment, I don't want to do a, a test for IG1228, the, the end to end piece. I want to do it to say, can I look at a component as an atomic thing? And create a set of tests. There's nothing stopping you doing. It. Like the answer to your question is yes, you can. Like the the TDD can put whatever log logic you want in there. But I think at the moment that, that my target for this was saying like the structure of this, the data. If I show what's behind it, is it's part of the the definition of TMF C001 product catalog management. Mm. I'm saying that should have a set of features. At the moment, there's one feature. And that feature, then you have the steps. So the TDD sits in the steps. I, I, I want I want to have it as features for that product catalog. 
I think that's the, that's the critical point about this is, <clears throat> I mean, we have an ETOM reference in there, which is kind of describing in very loose terms what the, what the thing should do as a component. We don't want to strip away all, in, all inventiveness from the vendors either. So we need to put together a baseline of features that this component should do in order to meet the, the test kit for this component. And yeah, the technique can be used across a bunch of components, but if I think what the, what the intent of this is to say, we expose APIs and these are the APIs we're using this data structure and this is the data structure that, you're, that we're using. We need also to say this is the minimum functionality of a component and we can express that in terms of the BDD. What we don't want to do is have a, a level of testing which can, which implies a bunch of components need to be provided together. Yeah. And I don't think we need to have, I think we need to have a way of extending it if you want, so that if a vendor yeah. has other functions or another, for other features, they can express them using this uh, this technique but not necessarily just to you know just limit the, the you will do this and nothing else isn't what we're trying to do it should be a minimum so it's kind of it's a bit of a bit of a balancing act just to how far down the, the test line we go and how far out in terms of broad scope of testing we go and also how we get that in in line with eton it, i mean it makes complete sense that you'd say that you know within the component spec you need uh, BDD, which describes the functionality of that, of that component. Logically, then, if we, if we said, right, that's our, our first task, let's suppose that's all done, then if you started to, if you then wanted to move on to testing end-to-end -end use cases, would you write BDD associated with the ID1228 use cases and do it in exactly the same way? It's just, you know, combining the... I think that's the project concept. You know, I think when, when, you're, when you're running a project and you've selected five components, absolutely, I would do test automation as an implementation practice using this kind of technique. But I don't think it's necessarily the TM forum. I need to do that. I'd agree, I'd agree with that. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, yeah. That's, that's I, I, I have a comment on that one. I, I, I don't think we have to bind the BDDs to the use cases in 1228 because when we define the... Uh, component is a generic component, but the 1228 is, is a specific use case as we have it. And another aspect here, I'd see the BDD here we defined is a scenarios defined is based on crowd operations. I mean, I'm just trying to make it I mean, simpler to define the BDD for each component. For each component, usually we have the, uh, we mandate some of the APIs uh, exposure expose APIs. And for each API, we have some REST resources. So the crowd operation, um, we can have the scenario based on the crowd operations on the, those resources. But the question is coming here in, in API, TMF API, we don't mandate all of the resources and we don't mandate all of the operations. If we define here in the BDD here, that means actually we're going to override the what we have in the conformance of the API. That's, that's again, is I think we need it somehow. Then is it gonna be, my point here is gonna be more work on that one because lots of optional things there, optional behavior for each REST resources we may expect. And then this, the list of the scenarios is gonna be a lot for each each uh, component the specification. So in, if we go for that direction, we should play that BDD uh, a specification from the component specifications could be linked, but it shouldn't be, in, I would say, as part of the uh, component specification, because in, uh, uh, we may need a lot of modification in BDD later on, depends on the, what actually uh, have, um, we have on the, uh, the uh, APIs, and we don't want to change frequently the specification. Okay. I tend to agree with you that, that you know, I think 1228 was picked as a, as a good example of a, of a start point. It isn't necessarily, because not all components are involved in 12, 1228, you know, it's, a, it's not the, the template. I just use it, just I wasn't completely making it up. But you're right, we could, but, like, no, it doesn't have to be linked to these end-to-end -end use cases. But I, I, think so that, I think the point is, though, that this, is, that this is something that's really targeted at being able to test that the component does what it has to do. It isn't, and you, I agree with you, it's not defining everything about a particular API because not not every API function is called from a given given component you know <laughs> it's it's not necessarily ex exercising all the options of that API in that component so it is tied to a component rather than to an API but having said I agree with you that you know we need to come to us to a baseline of saying a product catalog in its purest and MVP form you know the mi minimal viable product catalog 
must do at least these functions and then create BDD that covers those functions. So I think that that's kind of a, a, a start point that we're going to need to hit at some, because otherwise you're right, you know, as soon as, as soon as you change something, you, you have to start to, um, re reacting by changing everywhere. So th this is effectively a description that's, that should be a, not in parallel to Eton, but should be complementary to the Eton description at the top, it seems to me. But I agree, I feel actually it's a very good idea to uh, to have the BDD defined for each component, but it, my point is should be a separate specification because it's gonna be more details, to, uh, more dependency on the API behavior we have it there. And another, I have a question from Lister here. I mean, if you have the scenario dependency, that means the scenario two dependent on scenario one, can we automate this concept or like what you have it here, for example, again, category should be loaded again here. If already the scenario is working loaded and then just we yeah, in the scenario two, we're gonna reuse it. Yeah, effectively, like this, this feature will run and anything you create in this one is still there for this one. Like and which is that's why I actually created the given an empty catalog as a separate step, just like I could like if I wanted the scenario two to break its dependency on scenario one, I could quite easily do that by reusing this this term here. But as it stands, like at the end of this this work, your your data is in a completely different state because you've created all of these things in your catalog. Um, my, my question you can... yeah, it's about the scenario dependency. I know this cucumber has some sort of uh, support for uh, dependency injection, and um, but that's uh, it seems that not applicable here. But but the, like the use case we have, for example, the test suite and the use case. So in the test suite, we may have the use cases dependent to get together somehow. But that's I'm not sure here. To be, because we have this, this I mean, this um, dependency a lot in the APIs. In APIs, when we, uh, for example, create a resource, then we expect lots of things already is there. I mean, the uh, reference to other resources, if it's the other resource there. So we don't want to, again, from scratch, doing this one. In, in API CTK, I think we clean every time and then start from scratch for everything. Yeah. I'm not sure here we can do that. I think from a, from so we, we don't also really agree just... where, where we're splitting from the point of view of the, the CTK itself. You know, I, I think the BDD is sensible to have, you know, the, the, the given when then is sensible to have there, whether you go down to the level of the TDD or whether that's the thing that is written by the by the component supplier to prove that it conforms with this this test kit is the question I would have. Because because ultimately at some point it's it, it's it's testing that API. So we could go as, as far, far down as we want, I guess, but to some extent it's in the domain of the component supplier to, to, to demonstrate compliance, isn't it? What I mean? So is, is the model that you'd create this as a sort of like stage two specification? <clears throat> and then the supplier say, I've got my test partners and everything, and I can show how my tests, which I guess is stage three, map through to your stage two, and here's the test report. Yeah, is that sort of the way the thing would go? That's the challenge we have. For example, the same example here. For example, my category is optional in the TMF catalog. And uh, here we define the scenario to load the category and then the load product offering and create uh, product offering based on the categories there. So that means we add some requirements for the component that already is not, I mean, examined by the API. I think it's quite clear that the API, the primary API for these things, has got a lot of stuff which is optional. And when yeah. we get to defining an actual component in an environment, some of those things might need to be moved from being optional to required for a component. So I think, you know, it's okay for the API team to have a minimal API, but that minimal API might not be minimal for these components. I think that's a worthwhile discussion. Or you, or you could in fact make, you know, put the BDD there and have the compliance to it as optional. So, yeah. you you know, you either, you either you do or don't comply to the catalog or to the- So, you know, if you offer- Category one, yeah. but if you do comply to the category yeah, one, yeah, you don't have yeah. to comply to that category one. You know I mean? So you'd effectively profile this test with, you know, what your catalog actually does. So you effectively set, select subset that's relevant to your implementation. That's another interesting strategy as well.
Exactly. And um, from, that, from that purpose, I kind of, I kind of think that we, we, if we're going to define it that way, we should have the same sort of standard extensibility as we, we applied to the APIs that, that allow you to extend the test and, and, and specify what tests you're actually trying to comply to effectively. Yeah, the good thing about this sort of approach at stage two, this sort of level, is you could apply it to uh, user interfaces on catalogs as well as, as APIs based interfaces as well, because this basically describes the behavior that's expected, and whether you invoke it through a user interface or through an API is really a bit secondary. It takes a bit more setting up with the, with the user interface because obviously yeah. you've got different, uh, uh, different look and feels and all the rest of it. I was wondering, actually, I was a bit late on the call. Sorry about that, Lester. I meant to be on a bit earlier, but um, I was wondering whether we need a workshop on this with the um, Accelerate Week with the component team. I yep. don't know. The, I've, I, that's actually why I was late because I was responding to Ian about candidate workshops, and this was the one I'd forgotten. When I looked at the thing, I thought, oh, yes, I need to get this one sorted out. Well, but I think this would be good to talk through. The, the other thing, too, is that the problem with using uh, 128 is 128 tends to describe sunny day scenarios. And you do actually, for behavior, need to be able to describe you know, the, the abnormal behavior, effectively, or non sunny day type things, you know, that you get the right responses. So, for example, if you read a catalog that's empty, you know, or, or, or update a specification that doesn't exist. You know, this should generate right error messages, basically. So there's always a. My experience with running test programs is that the number of abnormal tests you need outweighs the number of normal tests. You know, it's it's probably by a factor of five or ten to one. This is quite good. Did you publish this? By the way, it's. All of this is in the Git repo for the CTK. Okay. Right. okay. Get it down. If you look at the branches, it's under, I created a BDD branch. So I haven't, I haven't merged it yet, but it's all there in the repo. It, it, you know, it looks as if you've got a reasonable set of material that you could start a discussion with the component team. Yes. Yeah. Like, I was keen to get, I think it was a stage where I'd like to see some other people creating some of the yeah. scenario and if someone else creates a scenario we'll see if we can then create the test like how it should work is the the Daitano's team should be creating the scenarios and we should be then saying ah oh, i can go and create the tdd yeah. that realizes that the scenarios well one of, one of the things that struck me about the component team is they're actually you know spending quite a bit of time on defining what the scope of the components are there's quite a lot of detail in that area and you know, they're really not quite ready or resourced to deal with the testing. So it's a question of when and who does the testing. It probably should be under the testing team, sorry, under the, uh, under the component team. But I'm wondering whether if we had a workshop at say Accelerate, we could perhaps get some people who've got more of a testing background to sort of pick this up. So they're perhaps working on the I mean, the, the ODA component team at the moment is trying to get, I think, 10 components agreed. And you know, at this stage, it'll be mostly getting the scope of the components, I think, agreed. And I think they're inevitably going to change. So, you know, the action week or accelerate week would be a good moment because people would have sort of kind of got the first tranche components and you could actually get someone with a contesting background to sort of walk through, you know, and produce more comprehensive tests, basically. Is it the new, I see Gaetano is on the call. Does that, con does that concur with your understanding of where you are with the ADA team, Gaetano? I will tell you yes. And, and, and you know, Dave, what is the situation by now? What is the content of our specification? And yeah. we are not dealing with any test specification. Yeah. It's a question of timing, I think, and the fact that, the, you know, You'd think that defining 10 components was easy, but it isn't. In my, from what I've seen in the discussion, it's very hard. Now, the, the question is, uh, should the BDD belong to the other component specification or should belong to test 
it's a test a specification test certification yeah i mean I, i'm wondering that i'm purely speculating here whether we need like a test sub team of the oda component team and when you've got each tranche of components stabilized they go and work on the test cases and then there'll be inevitably some discussion about ambiguity in the spec so it could be regarded as a sort of proactive way of driving up the quality of the specs progressively over time but you, we probably need to pick up some points Kamal raised because we need to be clear what what the tests are we need like a sort of a testing strategy document that describes you know what's in the scope of the test I agree with Kamal that maintaining these as on a separate page from the uh, component specs is probably sensible because they'll be they'll iterate a bit independently of one another. I mean, from a pure from a pure purist perspective, we should, I suppose, start with um, with uh, user stories. We should start with with what the component yeah, sure. should do, and then go down into the in, into the uh, the use case and the and the BDD or at least the TDD. You know, you can define because yeah, you, you pick the up the preconditions or the um, test yeah. test environment but, that way, wouldn't you? Yeah, but but you know we 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 are where we are, and I think the component definition work is 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 progressing enough that we don't we don't want to disrupt it by by throwing in some <laughs> some users. No, we are doing some work on experimental templates at the moment, but the timing of when that goes in, I think, is going to need further discussion. Yeah. Um, okay. And I, I think from my from my perspective, Claudia is on the on the call also. We're we're going to start trying to 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 add to the. To the number of cases are uh, um, available to, to the work that, that Lester's done in time for the end of the sprint, anyway, for for, for April Fool's Day. So we'll, we'll we'll move to that. But I think are there any permissions need, on to... the GitHub, by the way? Because uh, I I've, I was going to crack it, see if I can link in to GitHub through my own version of uh, Visual Studio Code. And I did let download the Gherkin uh, Cucumber package. I hope you're not asking me that. Public, uh, it's public. Uh, everyone has access. Oh, okay. Is okay. it, are you are you manage that part of the repro, uh, Enrique? So I run into problems. You can give me a hand on that. Sure. Yeah. Yes, I can. But it but seems I, that we I need the work we're doing at the moment is is, is exemplifies effectively what can be done. But I think. I think it gives us a clear picture of what we what are the what are the options and what the possibilities are. But I, I do think that you're right. We need to have something some some discussion about exactly what is what is required for a component definition so that so that the the suppliers can meet like for example if we're expecting the suppliers to come back saying well against these cucumber gherkin spec uh, test conditions we've got effectively the low level tests which go at the api level you know there's a sort of a bit of what's the test strategy for how this works and in particularly in the context of somebody integrating suppliers components into a devops type environment or you know where the procurement bits come in you know I'm guessing that's kind of where we're at. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Uh, one, one more comment here. I think it seems that we need, instead of having one component specification, we need a package of the specification. Package has this document that specifies what process, what what processes, what seed ABs, what APIs and events is, is yeah. needed for that one. And the other one is the implementation file, definition file, and BDD file. Yeah. It should be the separate, actually, uh, component of that package. I'd say we need a kind of a test strategy where we lay out what the purpose of the testing yeah, is yeah, and how it's yeah. used by different stakeholders, how it's used by the vendors, the person doing the integration, perhaps what's important from a procurement point of view. I don't think all that sort of stuff needs writing up. That's why I rather suspect we need a team, a sub-team of the technical architecture uh, team to actually do this because... If you get some people who've got a good testing background, they'll know the kind of, you know, what, what they'd expect uh, for this sort of thing. Kamal, the, the way in which the, like the component spec re refers to the swaggers, is it just links to them? Yeah. I'd, if, you, if we didn't want these part of the core spec, I'd just put a link to the BDD and have like, a, like an online you know, BDD testing kit and link to yeah. it for the component spec. As opposed to having like a trying to have a package. Yeah, actually, there is a bit of a discussion about tooling, which I think Ian will say something about at Accelerate, about trying to get to more of a repository based approach. I don't think we'll get there in one flash cut or any stretch of the imagination, but part of it is about uplifting the tooling for the existing SID and 
it on work and then what might be possible after that. I think you probably want to discuss the possibilities. I mean, you could envisage putting components to get in a tool environment so that it's kind of repository based rather than document based, which is where we are at the moment. But these are probably things that take, you know, nine months to get sorted out. I think I don't think it'll affect the immediate pieces of work, but it might affect the way in which you envisage the future of this work and how it might be supported. Just a lesser mention a link. I think it may not be link if we're going to maintain it separately. We had this experience in API, you know, in the previous APIs, some sort of the conformance included as part of the specification and even to testing definition is part of the conformance we had. And then based on the, I mean, the maintenance concept we had is we decided to separate them. So that means someone may work on the specification but uh, someone else may work on the, for example, the testing aspects of that uh, specification. So the, the link is, is a package together. Is in, I mean, but there's not direct link there from the document to that one. Because we don't have, for example, the API, we don't have any link from a spec to which conformance, which CTK to be used. We know this is a package and a specific version, but that's... Uh, I think you made it, was it on the TA call last week, you mentioned about versioning, I can't remember if it's last week or, yep. uh, but that, that's pretty important because as soon as you get these links, you need to know what you're linking to and what the version of the thing is. It gets quite complex quite quickly, but I don't see any alternative, basically. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everyone. We've got just a few minutes left, and thanks, Lester, for your demo.